Hello, hello, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks, replay viewers, for watching. And thank you, YouTube viewers, for popping in. I appreciate it. Uh, YouTube viewers, if you'd like to participate live in the chat here, uh, download Periscope to your app and uh, search for penguin and fish. And uh, that's where I'll be. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going. It is New Black Sunday. All righty. Let's get going right away here. Howdy, all. Hope you're having a good Sunday. It is New Black Sunday for the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. Uh, we're working through the, it's a hundred block quilt along. You can find out more information at thesplendidsampler.com. And it is block 67 tonight, Bob and Chase. Here it is right here by Scott Hansen. It is teeny, teeny little strips. And we are going to do that by paper piecing. Uh, so we'll be doing some foundation paper piecing tonight. It's going to be a little different than my usual paper piecing because I'm still on the vintage sewing machine, uh, which does not have a reverse stitch. So we'll be, uh, and we have to back tack, which is basically a reverse and then a forward stitch. And um, I'll have to turn my whole work around to do that because I, I can only go forward on this machine. So that'll be kind of interesting. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I am the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery and a fabric designer, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central. And like I said, we're working through the Splendid Sampler Quilt Along. It's a free quilt along. Uh, right now it's free. It's going to be turned into a book later, and at that point I think they're going to take all the patterns down. But right now you can get them all for free. Uh, and check that out. It's got a huge Facebook page, too, with over like 22,000 people on it who are making this quilt, which is crazy. So, all right. Let's get going. I'm going to flip you around. There we go. Alrighty, here we are. Just trying to get in focus a little bit here. Okay. So, to start out, I have some colored pencils here. We're going to use those in a bit. So here is what we got going on. It is paper pieced because it's got all these different uh, tiny, tiny strips. So here are the pieces. We're going to be doing four segments, it looks like, of the, a similar thing. These are going to be the four bits here, and then the rest looks like just uh, a few squares. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to worry about cutting those squares. I'm going to worry about these paper piece things. And uh, how I'm looking at it, I mean, I printed this out in black and white, so I can't really see any color, but uh, it looks like it starts with a light in the middle, a dark, oh no, a light, yeah, a light in the center there, a dark going around that, and then a medium toned uh, fabric going around that. So I thought maybe I'd break out my scraps. Here are my scraps right here. And since these strips are so small, I might be able to use some of my scraps for these pieces. Uh, otherwise, I have my fabric bin right here uh, that we can pull from. So I thought, I, I thought it'd be like a scrappy project. Just push the lever on the top right all the way up. I don't have a, le oh, a lever on the top right here. Let me, let me uh, take you guys off here for a sec. So... Lever on the top right. I don't think I have a lever on the top right. No lever. This is the bobbin winder right here. Yep, no le no lever on the 66 here, I don't think. All this side stuff is uh, the for the motor. Nope, none on this guy. Uh, I did a little research right beforehand to just to see if I could um, find something about it being able to reverse, and I couldn't really find anything. Although I didn't, I didn't look all too hard. I just did it pretty quick. But nope, I don't think there's a reverse. A reverse on the 66. So anyway, let's go over to these, and then there's there's actually a third sheet to kind of show the layout here, 
and I printed out a second sheet of the the paper piece part because that's what we're going to use to cut. So I think to start out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code my pieces here. And I'm, I'm just going to do that because once we start piecing, it's going to get confusing really, really quick. So I'm just going to grab my colored pencils. And for the light colors, I'm just going to color in this yellow just quickly. And I don't necessarily, I'm not going to necessarily make it yellow, but I just want it to be light. Not, you know, I suppose I could have just left it white too. And then it was a dark in the middle. So here's a dark color. Let's use this. I'm just going to put it around the number because I want to see the numbers still. And since these strips are so skinny, I'm going to use my add an eighth ruler instead of my add a quarter. And I'll, I'll show you that in a, in a sec too, what I'm talking about there. But let's just prep our pieces first. Oops. Okay. And then this outside is kind of like my medium tone. So let's just, here we go. This is, a, this is medium. I'm definitely not using these colors because I don't, I don't really have a lot of these colors in my, in my stash that I'm using, but we'll get the idea. Light, dark, medium. Just kind of getting the, the values down. It's just a good guide because once we start moving this around, it gets confusing pretty quickly. All right, so those are ready. I'm going to cut these squares out now. So it looks like this one has the seam allowance added into it already. Uh, that's this dotted dotted line right here. So this is actually going to turn out, let's get close up here. It's going to be the size of this inner square where this dotted line is. Uh, but uh, so when you get a paper piece pattern like this, not all of they don't always have a seam allowance built in. Sometimes the design will just go right up to the edge like that. But that's okay because all you have to remember is to always have a seam allowance and always have a generous seam allowance. So bigger than the quarter inch seam allowance. Um, we're going to put a big seam allowance on every single piece we do, including the outside. So it's not like we'll accidentally cut this off. We won't. So, all right, let's, cut these guys out and then we can get started with the fabric. But yeah, definitely recommend just color coding it. And you know, I could have done a little bit better job. Like I could have, I could have picked out my fabrics perfectly and uh, color coded it to the exact thing and drawn in the pattern a little bit. So I really knew what was what, but this works perfectly fine. So. And I, again, I'm going to use my scraps and I'm just going to do light, medium, dark scraps. I'm not going to worry so much what the color of those are, I think. We'll see what, we'll see what's in the scrap bin and work from there. How about that? You know, I don't have to be so exact with this outside either. It's not going to be a problem for us. All right. What's nice is that uh, this is really easy to cut apart these squares. Yep, we are doing paper piece tonight. Foundation paper piece is actually probably more accurate because we're using the paper. We're sewing directly onto this paper. Um, it's going to be our foundation for the rest of the piece. So that's why foundation paper piecing. Uh, it's not completely paper piece though. Just these four blocks are paper pieced, and then there's some squares. Uh, then, it, then it turns into a nine patch, which is basically three rows of three. So these are four of the squares that will make the nine squares. All right, garbage out of the way. Toss those behind me. Okay. Now we are ready to go. So we're just going to do the same thing four times, but I'm going to start with just, just
just one. So I'm going to scooch all these other guys off to the side. So we've done a few other paper piece blocks for the Splendid Sampler, but only one or two have had pieces this small. Um, but it doesn't matter. I actually think it's a whole lot easier uh, to do small pieces with paper piecing versus big pieces because l your fabric isn't flopping around all over the place. So let's just start. Um, when you have your sections, uh, so this is another easy thing about this paper pieced block is that there's only one section. So we just have one, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We just have seven pieces. It's not one of those paper pieced ones where we have A1 and A2 and A3, and then we have B1 and B2 and B3, and you gotta do both those separate and put them together. We're not doing that. It all happens all at once. So that's that makes it easier. So we're gonna start with number one. And uh, you just go in order, so one, you know, one through seven. Uh, so what we're going to find is a light colored fabric, and it needs to be uh, as big as this square or rectangle here, plus my generous seam allowance. And by generous, I mean, like, I do sometimes a half, of, half an inch. Um, I, do a, I do over a quarter inch, usually, and... Uh, um, Sometimes I'll do a half an inch. The lucky thing with this is it's just squares, so we don't have to manage all the triangles. Sometimes the triangles, the weird angles can throw us, but with this, it's just squares, which makes it awesome and really, really easy. So let's get the scrap. So this is a light colored one. I wonder if this, oh, see, this is too small. See, I, it goes from the heights fine, or the heights, the width is, you know, I don't know, this would be stretching it. This might work. Why don't we use this piece? Uh, so this, you can see, is uh, tall enough. We got a, our generous seam allowance, and we have a generous seam allowance on either side. And the beauty of paper piecing is that I can leave it a little blob like this, and it's not going to matter at all. That's, I don't have to do any fancy cutting for paper piecing. So to do your number one segment in paper piecing, you really, it's really nothing. The, the, the paper piece for number one is different. We're going to treat it differently than the, all the other ones. There's not even sewing involved. All we're going to do is glue it down on our piece of uh, fabric. So make sure your fabric is right side down. You want your wrong side exposed. And we are going to just kind of center uh, our yellow guy in there. So we have our generous seam allowance. This is a little tick out of it, so I want to be aware of that. Um, so I have the generous seam allowance all the way around. No, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make them all separate, just because then I can go through the process here and show you guys. So I'm just gonna put a little dab of glue on the back of that number one, place them in the center there. Just like that. And that's, uh, or this, this glue is removable. It's just a cheap uh, water-based glue. You can get like an Elmer's glue or something. Um, let's do that here, there. So basically, number one is done at this point. Uh, the uh, right side of the fabric, uh, when you, this is actually the wrong side. So when you flip, it'll be in reverse. And uh, now the right side of the fabric is exposed. You know what? I want to try and get one of these little dots in. So I think I'm going to I'm going to move this over just a hair. I think I still have plenty of seam allowance there. Yeah, so now now I'll get uh, I think some of these little dots in. Okay. Moving on. That's it. Number 1 is done. So all right. Next, we have to find the next number, and here we are. It's number two. What? That is a tiniest little piece there. So, all right. Um, to do all the other numbers, we'll be doing the same exact way. So, what you're going to need is a postcard. Um, this is one of my postcards. Uh, you want uh, something like that's paper that's thin, but it's it's a little thicker. This is going to be used as our straight edge, so we can get perfect. Um, perfect seam allowances. So, all right, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up everything that we've done before, basically, and leave number two exposed. And I'm going to put this postcard right along the line that's in between number two, which is the one we're working on now, and everything that came before. So that's number one. So we're going to put our postcard right on this line, and we're going to pretend that nothing else exists. So right, we're covering up the one, and we're going right on that number two line between one and two. And now I'm going to hold my postcard there, and I'm going to flip this entire paper over here and make a nice straight edge here. So this is where we're going to cut our perfect seam allowance. So you can take a uh, um, you can take a ruler like this and place the quarter inch along your postcard edge, and you can cut this off with your rotary cutter. However, um, I am going to use something called you know what I'm going to show you both things. So this is an add a quarter ruler, and. Uh, what this does is exactly what we just did here, and you might think, well, this was easy. Why do I need a special device just to measure a quarter inch? Um, because that's literally all this does. Is So I folded my paper. This is a ruler that has a tiny lip on it, a tiny ledge. So I can just bump it boop, right up against my postcard, and I don't have to measure. I know this is a quarter inch, and I can cut right there, right away with my rotary cutter. So this is one of the things that people told me uh, when we started doing the, there's the, the lip, you can see it. When we started doing paper piecing, they're like, oh, you gotta get an add a quarter and you can do that quarter inch. And I'm like, I can measure a quarter inch. This is just ridiculous. Why would I need this thing? But holy cow, now that I've gotten it, I just got it to try it out. It is so slick to just plop this on there and cut. you. You take measuring out of this entire thing, which makes it so relaxing. No measuring, no nothing. You can work with blobs, uh, no measuring, and you have perfect seam allowances. So, uh, what I'm going to do different, though, than the add a quarter ruler is that I have an even smaller add an eighth ruler. So this makes I mean, you can tell, uh, this makes, instead of a quarter inch seam allowance, it makes an eighth of an inch seam allowance, uh, which is actually kind of tricky sometimes. It's, it's easier to sew with a quarter inch because you have more leeway in your seam allowance. However, for teeny, teeny, teeny blocks like this, um, sometimes, like the quarter inch is almost going to go over the edge. I mean, it, it's not quite, but it's close. So I thought... Um, instead of adding lots of layers of fabric with that extra seam allowance, which actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't think we have that problem. But I wanted, I haven't gotten to use this uh, a whole lot yet, so I wanted to try it out. So instead of having a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to have an eighth of an inch seam allowance on, on mine here. So I'm going to just butt this up against here, and we will cut this for our first perfect seam allowance. So there we go. We started out with our blob, but now I have a wonderful seam allowance. So all right, now I can unfold my paper again. And we're done with the postcard for now. And now we're back to picking fabric here. So all right, number two is a dark. So I want to use one of these really dark fabrics. Maybe this purple. This is a nice little size. Why don't we do, do that? Maybe try and get it over here where we have a bunch of purple. I'm definitely going to want to use some of these blues. You know what, I think I'm going to just, eh, nah, I'll leave, leave it right here. So, okay. I was going to just flop a bunch out, but that's going to get messy fast. My tiny workspace here. So, okay, I am going to cut a nice straight edge, and this straight edge is going to match up with the straight edge that I made here. And again, what I'm looking for is a piece that's as big as this number two, uh, plus the generous seam allowance. And that's what this is. So to test, I'm going to just put this down. 
and uh, where we folded it, I'm going to lay the folded line along what I think is going to be my straight edge, plus this little seam allowance. So I add a little seam allowance there. And now I'm looking with, with this the right side down, does it cover my number two plus my generous seam allowance? And I'm just peeking and it covers it by quite a bit. So this is a plenty big spot. But this is helpful. I mean, with rectangles, it's pretty easy to see. But when you have a triangle, like even funny little shapes, uh, sometimes it's good to do this little fold, you know, get your straight edge and then put the fold near that straight edge and see if it does your coverage how you want. Um, Cause triangles can get tricky. They, the angles are funny and all that. Um, but with rectangles, this will be pretty easy. So I'm going to just clean up this straight edge and you know what? I'm just going to use the back of my pad and eight ruler. There we go. And now I'm going to line up that straight edge, that one that we just cut with the straight edge that we cut here. And we'll do a little test here as well, um, just to show you how to test. You know what, maybe we'll do that in the next one once we get this number one um, sewn down. But there is a way to test to make sure that it covers and I, I'll show you that next. But right now I'm gonna line up the straight edges and we're gonna flip it over and we're ready to sew, but let me scoot you over for that first. Okay, so here is my sewing machine. Uh, the trick with this, like I said earlier, is that my sewing machine does not have a reverse. So, and I'll, I'll tell you why that's important in a sec here. Okay, I'm just getting my little stiletto out too. All right, so I'm just gonna hold these pieces with the edge there and flip it over. This is why small pieces are nice. You don't need to really pin them Okay, so here's our piece. I want to sew directly on that line in between the one, the two, which is what we're working on now and everything that comes before it, which in this case is the one. So I wanna start here and end here. And I don't wanna go really into this four area or to this three area. I wanna start there and stop there. And I also wanna back tack to lock my threads in place. Um, so I want to um, do one stitch or two stitches, then reverse two stitches or reverse back to the line and then go here and then do another little reverse. That's called a back tack. Um, just, you know, stitch one stitch, reverse a stitch, go all the way forward, then again, and then back stitch and then another little stitch. However, so that's, that's what you guys can do uh, on your machines. You probably have a reverse button, uh, really easy. My machine doesn't have that. Mine can only go straight and forward. So I'm gonna just stitch one stitch and then I'm gonna rotate my whole thing around and stitch the, it backwards and then I gotta rotate it back again um, to go the width. So it'll be a little funny. Um, I haven't done paper piecing on this machine before. Uh, if you're new here uh, or if you haven't been here for the past few days, my normal sewing machine is in the shop. I'm getting it. Uh, I had an issue with the cord. Ooh, see, I'm not used to this machine. The feed dogs are a lot higher. Um, so that's in the shop. So I'm, I'm using my husband's grandma's vintage sewing machine. It is a Singer uh, Model 66, and it was made in 1927. Uh, and I'm just kind of learning it a little bit. So, all right. I am going to sew directly on that line so the needle will go right on the line. It's like, it's like a coloring book. You're just going right on the lines, you know? No scant quarter inch that you have to worry about, no nothing. So, all right, so I'm gonna give this a try. I'm gonna try and go slowly. All right, so I'm gonna make one stitch and now my needle's down and I have to rotate this whole thing because mine doesn't go backwards. And you know what? Maybe I should pin just for that reason. We might pin the next one. Oh, my thread's stuck. All right. And the foot down and back. And now we're gonna rotate back again. And you know what? I'm gonna check my seam allowance that there, or my, my um, 
edges that they're still lined up and they're, they're good enough. So, all right, now I'm gonna stitch on that line. So you would just no do a normal reverse and backwards, but unfortunately I gotta do this way. Oh, that's an idea. Could sew the whole seam twice, especially with little itty bitty things like this. Well, but it said back and forth, so I would need to sew it three times, really. So I, I think I'm just gonna continue like this. So that way, and then rotate it back again. It's that act of going over it three times. But all right, so we're done. So my needle's up now. And I'm gonna pull this out and just snip. I'm leaving a long edge there. So immediately what I do after is snip off the little ends. Uh, if you don't do this, they are gonna get in the way super duper fast. So I do that on the front and the back. And the next thing, we are gonna press this. So I'm um, looping up here. So I always make sure that my printed side is down on the ironing board. I never press with this side up because this, uh, my printout can transfer to my iron. I don't wanna do that. <gasps> you found a 26 Singer Turtle. Did you, did you get it? <laughs> you were looking at the antique place, right? Oh man, so cool. So all right, so what I do first is I finger press it. And you can see we got a lot of excess. We are just sewing right there for 60 bucks. Good find, oh man, that is so cool. Congrats, that is a good buy. Or at least I would think so. So all right, um, we got these little flaps here. So what I like to do is I finger press the part that's sewn and then I just kind of extend that and finger press that rest of that seam so we have like a seam going the entire way. And then I'm gonna just press both my pieces open like this. Man, that is awesome. <laughs> so speaking of treadles, uh, I, I got a, a treadle base at an antique place years ago, but someone had converted it to have a butcher block top but I looked at it a little bit more today. I think they screwed it right onto the actual tabletop of this. I, I thought maybe it was glued, but I think it's screwed on. So I think I might be able to just unscrew it and have a treadle base for this. Here, I'm gonna tilt you guys down again. Uh, so that's just, that's just a little project I gotta figure out. And then I might actually be able to do this with a treadle. But okay guys, that is our number one. And our number two, is done. So I know it looks kind of crazy right now, but that is that is our first official paper piece uh, piece. And now we're just going to repeat that process that we did with this number two over and over again until we're all the way uh, to the seven. And I like thinking about this as like a three part system. Your um, your the cutting area here where you do your postcard and you pick your fabric and, and put that together, then you're sewing, then you're pressing. So it's just this three uh, triad thing going around and around and around. And it just gets really relaxing too. All right, so we did two. Uh, next is three. So that's this long one right here. Um, we need another dark colored fabric. Uh, and uh, again, it needs to be as big as this three plus our generous seam allowance. And you know, you can see what we're doing. We're doing full on crazy blobs. No need to cut anything. Um, if you're using scraps, no need to like cut these perfectly square first. And even if you're not using scraps, you can just use a scissors and cut your blob. Uh, if you don't want to deal with the whole ruler and rotary cutter and all that, uh, for that, you know, it's, Blobs are a okay, and we're still gonna have perfect seam allowances. Like, look at this is our seam allowance. It's gonna be perfect. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention: with your sewing machine, you want to uh, make your stitch length shorter because ultimately we're gonna be tearing these pieces of paper out. And with every stitch, you're making like a little puncture, like a little um, a perforation. So it's kind of like perforated paper when you're done that just tears away. So the closer you can get your stitches, the better. 
I have not figured out how to change the length of the stitch. I thought there was a dial on here that did it, but I tested it beforehand, and no matter what I did, um, it didn't change the stitch length. So I'm stuck with this stitch, stitch length, but I would normally have made this, um, it's about a 12th of an inch now. I would have made it uh, far less than that, um, just to make more perforation marks. So that's something you're gonna wanna do before you stitch your first line. I mean, you don't have to, but it's gonna make tearing away the paper a whole lot easier. So anyway, on to three. So again, we're gonna start with the postcard and we're gonna leave number three exposed. And the line, we're looking at the line that's between the three and everything that came before. In this case, it's both one and two. So I'm gonna put that right on that line again. And I'm gonna ignore that anything else exists. You know, I'm gonna be folding right up through this five and that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna pretend that that five doesn't matter. So right on that line fold it up and again I'm going to use my uh, add an eighth ruler. I think an add a quarter would be perfectly fine with this actually because none of the pieces are actually smaller than a quarter of an inch so your seam allowance shouldn't really get in the way. Um, but you know I haven't played with this guy yet so we'll we'll keep with the add an eighth. So let's cut. So now I'm cutting through both of these fabrics. those scraps out of the way and our perfect eight inch seam allowance. Pull that back, done with the postcard. All right, see, look at it. We got a perfect, perfect edge there. Isn't that cool? I mean, this started out with a crazy blob and now we have a perfect seam allowance. So, all right, we need a piece of fabric that's dark and it is the size of this three plus our generous seam allowance. So let's see what we've got here. You know, this is popping out at me right away because it looks it looks long enough. Oh yeah, this is awesome. We could use this. Oh, maybe, you know, maybe I could sneak in one of these. Eh, not long enough. I need a bigger seam allowance. But I don't know, why don't we, we'll use this guy. We might end up using this guy on the other side too because I don't know if I have any more long darks in here. Yep, I think that's too short. Oh, here, this one's dark enough too. So, all right, I'm gonna set this aside. I'll probably use this. Oh, here's another one. Here's some darks that will be long enough. I'm gonna just set those out for now. So I have them for the next round. Uh, but let's do this, this uh, dark blue for a number three. So again, I'm going to get a gender, or a, just get a nice clean seam allowance, or, um, uh, straight edge there and my add an eighth isn't long enough so I'm going to use my add a quarter. You just use your normal ruler, I just have these out. Alright. Oops. Well, you know what, I'm going to actually cut this down anyway. So we can do our test again. So on this fold, I'm going to put that folded edge along the straight edge with the little bit of seam allowance poking out. And I need a piece that's as big as this number three um, plus our generous seam allowance. So there's plenty at the bottom. We can actually even scooch a little bit more down there. And you know what? I can just take my scissors too. I need to go about to here. So that's, that's a pretty big seam allowance. And then I need a seam allowance up here as well, kind of. So I'm just gonna bloop, bloop, bloop. We'll just cut a blob. There, crazy blob. That will work perfectly. So this is our, our seam allowance. So this, this actually doesn't have a right or wrong side, but let's pretend that the right side is down and this is the wrong side. So let's match up the right sides together along that straight edge and I'm matching it up with that straight edge that add an eighth that we just cut. And we want to do it so when we flip it it will be uh, covering up this three. And here I'm going to show you how we can test that as well. Uh, if you have two pins we can test this and this this is easy because it's rectangles, but if you're working with triangles or some weird shape, this will be really helpful. 
we are going to pretend that we're going to sew on that line. And we're going to pretend by putting in two pins along that stitch line. So we're fake sewing right now. There we go. All right, so now we're going to flip it around and we're going to fake iron it. So there you go, we're fake ironing it. And now we're going to flip it and we're going to assess does number three, is number three covered completely and does it still have its seam allowance? And we can just peek by going underneath. Oh, plenty, plenty, plenty over here and plenty at the bottom and, and at the top. So we have placed our piece just fine. Um, we don't have to worry about it at all. So I'm going to fold it back, take the pins out, and let's throw these over here. And now we're going to sew. I'm going to start at right that point there. Um, you know, so we're sewing along this line, the part that's connecting three to everything that came before. So I'm going to start right here and I'm going to do my funny back stitch again where I have to flip it around and then back and then we're going to sew along this line and uh, um, this is the seam allowance right here. When you're stitching into the seam allowance you don't have to do your back tack. Your back tack is only important when you're within you know the space the space areas but if you're going out into the seam allowance which is outside this dotted line then you don't need to worry about the back tacking anymore. So I'm going to start here, back tack, and then just go off the page here. So, okay. Let's do the first stitch. And I'm going to rotate it around. And I didn't actually stitch very well, so I'm going to, oops, let, let's rotate it a little bit. Sorry, guys. I'm going to do one more stitch because I, my first stitch wasn't close enough to the line. So I'm going in the five a little bit, but it won't matter so much. And I'll, I'll show you why once we get to the five. But it's better if you stay right on that point where it meets instead of going into the other one. So I'm going to just double check my, yep, I am still lined up here. And now I'm going to go right along that number three line. And I'm going to just go right off. I'm not going to uh, do the back tacking there. Oops, let's get that a little higher. All right, pull that off. And again, right away, I'm going to snip off the excess, come here there, excess little threads because that will get annoying. All right, and the other side. Okay, start of number three, let's press it. Again, I'm gonna put the, um, the, the printed side down. I'm just gonna put some heat on there to set it. Oh, it sounds like your featherweight. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it has a nice sound to it. Uh, it's that motor, I think, uh, I'm excited to hear what it sounds like with just the treadle. It won't have that buzz. But all right, so finger pressing, and then you know it's gonna go off the edge a little here. I'm just gonna finger press that out as if it's stitched all the way there. And there we go. Okay, there's pieces one, two, and three there. We're starting to form something, you know, this will get cut off here and this will get cut off here and that will be the start of our cute little uh, dark area. And look, we did get some of these spots in our, our lightest color there. So that's, I'm excited for that. Okay, number four, let's move on. So four is on this side. This is our other dark color, but first let's do the postcard. So again, we need to uh, assess what is the line in between number four and everything that came before. So we're going to cover up what came before, which is, you know, we're over on this side. We're going to cover that up, leaving the number four exposed. 
And then we're going to forget that anything else exists. We're going to just fold all the way through. Alrighty. Get the add an eighth again. Look, we get to cut away all our crazy blobs. I love it. That's my favorite part when I just have a total blob and it just goes away like magic into a perfect, perfect uh, seam allowance. It's just the coolest. It really is. Okay, four. Let's grab, um, let's get it with all this purple in. That's so pretty. So again, if we want it, oh, I kind of, this is kind of similar, but I think that's okay. It's a little different. Oh yeah, it's a little different. Um, so let's get a nice straight edge first. And again, you know, I probably don't need this whole piece, but we're gonna, we'll do our test. So let's get a straight edge here. I could use this as my straight edge, but since we're doing just an eighth of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna get a nice pretty edge since there's less, less leeway for mistakes with it, just a quarter inch, or uh, an eighth inch, I mean. Okay, that's our nice straight edge. So let's um, put that facing down, and let's do our little test. So uh, where our fold was, let's put it on this fabric so we have a bit of a seam allowance there, and now let's check to find a piece that's big enough for this number four, plus our generous seam allowance. So this is plenty big. I can just slice it across here and we'll be fine. Let's just, let's just do that. <laughs> just like that. Oh man, I need a new rotary cutter blade. I'll have to, I have some in the basement. I'll, geez. Rotary cutter, you're supposed to work better than that. Um, I'll have to deal with that tonight. Okay, so here's our straight edge that we cut. That is where we're going to match up with that awesome straight edge that we cut here. Let's peek again where the four is. Okay, so it's more towards the top, so we want to veer ourselves that way. And I'm not going to test it this time. I know for, I mean, this piece is huge. It's going to for sure cover all this. And I, I don't even need that much. We can go all the way down here because we have a seam allowance around the edge already. So let's go a little higher. Let's just get to sewing. And really, I don't even need to do that test that I just did with the fold here. These pieces are rectangular. They're easy to estimate how big your pieces are. But it is, if you're just starting, it is always good to test. But that's a benefit of doing a really big seam allowance, like a big, huge blob, versus like just getting enough seam allowance. Because I know for a fact this is a huge piece. It is easily going to cover this. If it was only this big... I wouldn't be so sure if it would be able to cover this. I would have to do my test, which means flipping it over and pinning and doing all that with a big piece. I don't got I don't have to worry about it at all. So all right, I am going to start here this time, and I'm not gonna back tap because we're in the seam allowance, so I'm just gonna start here and sew to here, and then I'm gonna have to back tack it there again. So let's do that. Sewing right on that line. All right. Ooh, it's so fast, this machine. All right, I'm gonna go one more again, just because my stitch length is a little longer, um, and it's getting into that five, which I don't like. Um, that's a nice thing about having a smaller stitch length. You're more easily going to end up on that line where you want to. And then again, this other way. It's so funny that I have to turn my fabric like that. But I guess it's easy when we're dealing with just a little piece, these little paper piece bits. All right. <laughs> I freaked out for a sec there. I wanted to make sure that my right sides were together. And they are. I get talking and then I'm like, oh man, did I get my right sides of the fabric together? So I'm snipping off the little bits here. And up to pressing. We'll get a little faster here now, now that we kind of have the process down. So just setting the seam with a little heat and then flipping it over and finger pressing. Look, we're starting to get our shape. We got our, we got our little light colored shape in there now. So fun.
Okay, number four is done. Here it is. It's starting to look cute. And you know, these will be crapped like this. Oh, like that. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's move on. So we got number five. Where's five? Oh, bottom piece. So let's do our folding. And here's where you can see, so because my stitch length is a little longer, I've gone into the five on accident just a little bit, and you'll see what happens now when we flip it up. If you move the stitch length bar up, I don't have a stitch length bar. That's the problem. I don't, I don't have that on my machine. Oh, if you move the stitch length bar up, it goes in reverse. Oh, yeah, I get it. But yeah, I, I don't have, I don't have fanciness like stitch length. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that came years after mine or something. Yeah, who knows? It's just kind of funny. Okay, so I'm going to flip this up. and But now you'll see, since I went into that side a little, I'm going to have to pull that stitch a little bit to fold it up on that line because I'm stitched into that fabric. So I had to rip my paper a little bit there to get my edge, but we're fine now. Add a quarter, or add an eighth, actually. And now we get to cut all our little bits off again. I love it. Out uh, here. Perfect seam allowance. All right. Okay, we're on to the medium colors now. So let's see what we've got for that. And number five is a little bit smaller. So I need a piece as big as this five plus our seam allowance. You know, this hopped out at me. Ooh, wait, this has a ton of sewing in there. Maybe you can still use it. It's, I don't know. I have a bunch of stitches in here. I think I'm gonna just use this for a new, uh, a new leader. I'm gonna set that aside. Okay, what else? <laughs> Look, I have square triangle stuff in here. Oh, these kitties, these kitties are nice are a nice uh, medium color. So I already have a good straight edge, so I'm gonna just use this as my straight edge. I think we're, yep, we're plenty big, generous seam allowance. And I can just, I can eyeball this and know that I'm definitely gonna be able to um, do that five plus my generous seam allowance. So I'm not even gonna bother with testing or measuring. I'm just gonna use this straight edge that already existed, plop it on there and start sewing. Ugh. Just gonna double check that I'm covering my bases on the sides. I can put my fingers there on the two ends and no, yep, I'm plenty good, plenty on either side. So let's flip and sew. This time I do have to um, start and stop within the block, so I'm gonna back tack on both sides there. We only have two more after this. I think we might finish this, this uh, first block tonight, which would be great. All right, now I gotta flip around to do my back tacking. I'm gonna go one more stitch again. Oh, whoops, there. I went, oops, you guys can't see. I went I went two stri stitches too far into the seven because the machine got away on me, so we'll have to do that paper pulling thing again. Ah, well. Now we're going along that five. All right, Woo, we ended up right on the, on the line there though. So one forward and one back, and there we are. Snipping our thread bits. Yeah, see how far I went into that seven there. <laughs> That's not good. I think it's not so far that it's gonna show though let's let's take a look oops so let's see Ooh, i might get in there a little bit but i think we'll be i think ultimately we'll be fine it'll be okay okay up here internet says 66 has a knob five turns equals 18 to oh weird so there is a knob so i was turning that to try and get um, stitch lengths, but I guess I didn't realize I had to turn it like five times. I was thinking just turn it a little, and I did unscrew it quite a bit, so, hmm, all right, I'll play with that a little bit more. Um, 
I'll do that before tomorrow uh, when we're going to be working on this a little bit more. We'll see if that helps. For this time around, I will, um, I'll just stick with this, but thanks for looking it up. I will give that a try. So it was 31 over 2 is a 12, 12 stitch per inch. 31, I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's too numbery for me this, this late. But five turns was um, an 18th of an inch, is that what you said? Oh, three and a half turns. Oh, is it, is it 12 of an inch? <laughs> I'm getting lost. All right, five is done. Okay, so three and a half turns. <sighs> is it 12th of an inch? I turned it like quite a bit though, and I, I'm gonna have to play with that. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right, there is our tiny little piece there, our number two piece. Uh, got finally got cut off by our five piece. So that's our perfect little piece so far. That's the only one that's totally surrounded. All right, let's move on. We got six and seven. I want to finish these two before, before we're done here tonight. So let's do the postcard first. I'm exposing six, covering up everything else. All right, let's do the add an eighth. There we go. And now this is another medium colored. So let's see what we got. This green just kind of popped out at me. Ooh, this might be the perfect size too. Let's do the green. I'm doing it. Easy decision done. And I'm, I'm going to use this straight edge that exists already. So actually, I'm going to just go right here, flop it down, and sew. Oh man, I can't pick this up. All right, flip. And now this time it goes in both seam allowances, so I don't have to back tack at all. I'm going to go all the way up here and all the way down um, to the other side without back tacking. Actually, I'm going to go this way. So the fabric's on this side. Okay. Let's stitch that. Oop, come here, Fred. There we go. Oh, thanks so much, Sue. I, I, I totally appreciate that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that figured out before tomorrow because it's going to be so much easier to pull these papers out uh, with a smaller stitch, especially since these papers are so small. All right, and these guys... All right, pressing time. See, I mean, you can really get into a rhythm and go fast with this. Yeah, new technology. <laughs> Magic phones. But especially with rectangle blocks like this, where you can easily estimate um, visually the the piece of the size of the block, uh, where it gets into triangles, like I've been saying, then you'll definitely want to test it a little bit more, like how we did at the beginning. Um, with doing our, our folds, laying our folds out on the fabric and all that. Um, I would just rewatch the beginning of this and go through that process uh, if you have triangles or something like that. And we've also done some other blocks with triangles. Man, this is totally, this is just going to be a pieced pile of crazy, a uh, mismatched pile of crazy, but I think I'm going to like it still. This actually turned out to be kind of a medium colored with, um, with uh, all this light purple, but I kind of dig it. All right, so let's do our last piece, um, number seven here. Postcard, where are you? Oh, you slid under here. All right, here's where I sewed in too far again. So I'm going to have to fold it up and kind of pull out those couple stitches, pull out the paper at that spot. There we go. I'm ripping my paper a little bit to do that. All right, add an eighth. Rotary cutter. All right, getting rid of our blobs and our perfect seams uh, outs. And let's pick one more medium colored fabric to go right there. 
What about this? Ooh, is that big enough? Ooh, I think, uh, is that really medium colored though? Oh, I, I might use this. Let's see if I can, oh, what about this? This is more medium colored, let's use that. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. And again, I got a decent straight edge on this scrap, so I'm just gonna go right ahead and put that straight edge right up against there. And so, yeah, these rectangles make this whole process pretty speedy. They're just easy to eyeball, and I got these. You know, what makes it easy, too, is just that, uh, that it's so small. These pieces are so small, so there's lots of opportunities to use scraps. All right, again, I am starting the seam allowance and ending in the seam allowance, so I don't need to back tack. Just go right on that line. And there we go. So that is it for the sewing part of tonight. That That's all the sewing for, for this little block segment here. Just snipping off our thread bits. And let's press for the last time. I love this system though, this um, kind of circular system. You can do this all in one. Tiny work area. I just, I mean, and this this particular paper piecing, um, these rectangles and these itty bitty pieces, I am in, so in love with. I, you know what? It's just relaxing. It's refreshing. Um, this paper piece. Once you get the system down, it's just fun and easy. So we are gonna trim this yet too, because it still looks like a pile of crazy with our our little our um, crazy edges all the way around, but we're starting to get a sense of it. Um, let's flip it around and finish it up. Okay, so now that we have the segment done, we just need to trim the edges. And how we're gonna do that is I am going to disregard this outer edge, and we are gonna use this dotted edge as our guide we are gonna go a quarter inch from this dotted edge. Cause I know that the dotted edge is our perfect shape. I'm not gonna trust how well I cut this out. So I'm gonna pretend that that's not even there, but I'm gonna go a quarter inch from the dotted line all the way around. So I'm gonna grab my normal ruler again for that. So I'm gonna just line up my quarter inch right there. And I may clip some paper off. That's perfectly fine. Cause that edge doesn't matter. We're making it more precise now. All right, let's do the other side. But it's gonna magically be pretty after this, I think. Oh, and you know what? We're not gonna tear out the paper pieces probably until this whole thing is assembled. I'll see if there's any instructions on that in it, uh, but we will, um, I'm not gonna tear the papers off right now. We're gonna leave that, that as is. We'll deal with that later. But we can still make it pretty by trimming it to the quarter inch. All right, last cut. And I'm, we haven't picked a piece in a while, I feel like. This is fun. I'm really enjoying this. So, all right, here's the reveal. This is how it started. No, it's so pretty. But yeah, I think once we get all four pieces, um, we'll start to get a sense of, especially when we look at it from far away, like if you squint, you'll start to get these darks and mediums and lights. And I think we'll get a little bit better as we go. So just to, let's like lay this out just to see what this will look like. So I'm just using um, this picture as a guide. So all these U's kind of go onto the inside. Let's move him out of the way. So it'll be, oh, I'm missing one. <laughs> all right, well, one ran off somewhere. <laughs> oh, here it is, found it, okay. 
there and this guy would go there and then we'll have a solid we'll have solids uh you know for well not solids but these will all be singular shapes let's just throw that guy there we're gonna mock this guy up here they all be kind of like that and then these guys will be filled in with something too i don't know what yet let's throw that guy there <laughs> I don't think I have any shapes big enough anymore for, for that. There. <laughs> That's a square. Here we go. Throw that down here. And now I need one more. <laughs> here, let's, let's throw a half square triangle in there. <laughs> there we go. Something like that. <laughs> But yeah, so I'll, I'll probably do this all in one tone. So I'll either do this all kind of like light colors. I'll probably actually just do this all one color because I'm going to really want this to pop. And you know what? I'm going to get just stupid right now. Sorry if I'm just, just totally like wasting your time now. Let's just get a bright color out here and lay this down. Let's pretend, let's get this into about a six and a half inch square. Let's, let's go like, like this. There, now let's throw these guys on. This would have been smarter, huh? To do this the first time. But there, that's better. Well, this will be kind of cool, but like, look, just with this solid, look how much all of this pops. And you can really see the darks to the darks. I think it's helping the darks pop, actually. So maybe it would be smart to do a dark for the background. And then, you know, these white, these little light pops will really um, show off too. But yeah, like, look at that. That's kind of cool. I kind of like what's going on there. Um, so these will be all the scrappy, patterny things, and then maybe just a solid in the back like that. I think it's fun. So anyway, that's the gist of what we're doing. Um, so tomorrow we'll we'll cruise through. We'll finish at least one more of these. But I might just um, cruise through, like how we are going really fast towards the end of this. I might just do that uh, for all the next ones, and then refer people back to this this video if they want to get the whole thing. Um, maybe that's the way to do it. Um, then we can just get cruising on it quick. I don't know. I always say that, but then I always start explaining myself again. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to flip you guys around, and we will call it an evening. Hello again. So here we are. This is how small this is. It's little. It's a little baby block. I mean, look at that tiny piece right there, that itty bitty bitty piece. It's, it's smaller than my, my fingernail, and I have like the tiniest hands ever. So. Cute! I'm excited. I, I'm kind of digging the scrappy look. This was a great one to do for scraps because some of my scraps are just too small for some of these other things I'm trying to use them for. But for this, tiny little strips like that, that little number two and number five, I mean, it works great. So there's where we started. And again, it's the reverse of this because um, we're flipping it. But, you know, this doesn't have a you know, it's, it's equal on either side, so it doesn't really matter that it's reverse. But all right, there we are. We'll work on this again tomorrow, uh, and this video will go up on YouTube tonight, and then my YouTube is Penguin and Fish Movies. I, wouldn't this be cute as a quilt? Like, just like this. Like, imagine it huge, oh, or just a ton of them. There's a project for you, Cora. <laughs> you can work on that. So, all right, guys, thanks again for coming, um, and I will see you tomorrow. Uh, Tuesday is my class again, but I will be here tomorrow for some more paper piecing on Monday, and have a great Monday. <laughs> Hope your week starts off well. So have a great night.